Hi, my name is Ajay Nuka. I'm an associate professor at the Emory University Winship Cancer Institute. I'll be presenting about teclistumab, a B cell maturation antigen CD3 bispecific antibody in patients with relapse of fractal multiple myeloma. These are the updated efficacy and safety results from the Majestic 1 study that were presented at ASCO 2022. Teclistumab is a novel BCMA CD3 T cell redirecting bispecific antibody that was evaluated in a phase one, two trial, which is the Majestic One study that was investigating the safety and efficacy of teclistumab among patients who had previously received an immunomodulatory agent like thalidomide or lanolidomide, a proteasome inhibitor like botasmib or carfilzomab, and an anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody like daratumumab or isatuximab. So previously, it was shown that the teclistumab at a dose of 1.5 milligram per kilogram was very toler well tolerated and it yielded in high response rates. So here, the cohort is completed. There were 165 patients that were enrolled in this cohort. And again, as we talked about, all these patients have previously seen a PI, an EMED, and an anti-CD38 antibody. And these patients have never been exposed to a prior BCMA-targeted therapy. Patients would receive weekly dosing given subcutaneously under the skin, and the patients would the, the weekly dosing is preceded by a priming dose. And patients would continue to receive the, receive the drug on a weekly basis until progressive disease. The primary endpoint of interest is overall response rate. So a total of 165 patients were treated on this trial. In the phase two portion, 125 patients were treated. And these patients were followed for a very long time of 14 months. 95 patients continued to derive the benefit and continue to receive the treatment from this, from the, from this clinical trial. As you see, the average and the median age of patients is 64 years. And it, 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 Small chunk of patients are above the age of 75. African Americans constituted 21 of these patients, and these patients are all triple class exposed. That means, in order to get into the trial, they should be triple class exposed. And three fourths of the patients are triple class refractory. That means they're refractory to a PI, IMED, and an anti CD38 antibody. As you see, all the five drugs that, that we have including the two PIs, two images, and the CD38 antibody are called the uh, patients refractory to all these five drugs are called the pentarefractory drugs. And these patients, the third of these patients are pentadrug refractory. So making this a, a unique patient population that is heavily pretreated, highly refractory patient population. In this patient population, you're seeing a response rate of 63%. So two in three patients are responding to the drug. And when, when people respond, their responses are deep. VGPR rates, that's more than a 90% reduction is seen in 60% of the patients. CR rates, that is a complete response rates were seen in 40% of the patients. So these are unprecedented results that we had never seen in this group of patient, patients who have, who have been previously treated with, uh, with a PI, image and an anti-CD38 antibodies. More importantly, these responses, when they happen, are very quick. The first response happened in, uh, within the first month. It, it, the first response at 1.2 months. The best response happens at 3.8 months. The MRD negative rates were seen in a quarter of all the patients. If you just look at the patients who got a CR, half of those patients had an MRD negativity. So if you look at these subgroups, so this is called a forest plot, and it, it shows which are the subgroups of patients who got the maximal benefit. And if you look across all the subgroups of these patients, whether the patient is younger at less than 65 years old or older patients, everybody got the benefit here. If you look at the group of patients that did not get, get much benefit are the extramedullary plasmacytomas. These are the people who have disease outside the bone marrow presenting as lumps or bumps. And if you look at patients who received prior, less prior lines of therapy, so young patients who did not receive too, many, too much chemotherapy seem to get the most benefit, and patients who got more chemotherapy, more lines of therapy, received a little lesser benefit. So nevertheless, it is only suggesting us that 
if these drugs are treated as earlier lines of therapy, we potentially could gain more benefit from these drugs. And as you're aware, myeloma is a disease where if patients receive the same drug at two different times, they get two different responses. So it is always better to put the best foot forward. When the patients respond, the durability of the responses are, are way better. What you see here in these black lines or the black arrows show that the patients are maintaining the response and, and are continuing the, continuing the treatment. The responses in the green suggest the patient had achieved a complete response or better. The responses in blue or VGPR, you see a significant change from blue to green across the course. And these patients, 67 of the 104 responders continue to maintain the response. So median duration of response means patients who are achieving a response, how long do they maintain the duration of that response? And it is 18.4 months for the entire patient population and a 12 month event free rate of progression or overall survival is 68.5%. Among patients that achieve a CRR better, this is 80%. So this is what is called the progression free survival curve. It's, this is the Kaplan-Meier curve where the pro overall median progression free survival is shown close to a year. So the benefit across all patients to, for this benefit, benefit of the drug to prevent progression is almost 11.3 months. This is called the progression-free survival. The median overall survival is 18.3 months. I don't want you to be discouraged by this number. This is not mature. And patients, as they continue to derive these responses, this number tends to increase. So how about the safety profile? What are the most common toxicities that, that you see? Teclistumab is extremely well tolerated. Discontinuations, that means patients not able to tolerate, or dose reductions, patients not able to tolerate, so they go into the lower dose. These happen very infrequently. Only two patients discontinued due to adverse events. One patient had a dose reduction way beyond cycle 21. So the most common side effects that I see are, are mostly laboratory values, the neutropy, neutropenia, that's low white counts, low neutrophil counts. Those were seen in two thirds of the patients. Anemia, thrombocytopenia, these are all blood counts that can go down, which is expected from this class of agents. So non-hematological, what are the other side effects that you see? A specific side effect called cytokine release syndrome is seen with the cellular therapies. And that happens in almost 70% of the patients. But if you look closely, the grade two or greater cytokine release syndrome happens in only one in five patients. It's seen in 20% of the patients. We have, an, we have an antidote for this, and this is called a IL-6 antagonist. It's called tocilizumab. If it is given, it helps with the cytokine release syndrome. So infections seem to be a common theme with this class of agents, and infections are seen in 76% of the patients. Three of the four patients will have an infection, some kind of an infection. How serious it is, is seen in 44% of the patients. These are big numbers, but nevertheless, these can be addressed uh, better by keeping a close watch, making sure that unnecessary exposures are avoided, and being proactive by giving prophylactics, prophylactic antibiotics, prophylactic IVIG, and those can help reduce the risk of infections. And from an infection perspective, this was happening right at the time of the COVID pandemic, and, and there were some COVID-related deaths in this patient population as well. We talked about the cytokine release syndrome. Cytokine release syndrome is seen in 72% of the patients, and grade two CRS was seen in a Third of, the, uh, third of the patients, and tocilizumab was given in 36.4%. This is the grade two CRS I was talking about to the right, seen in one-fifth of, one of the patients. So the other toxicity that you can see with cellular therapies are called the neurotoxic events. Some uh, neuro, neurotoxic events like headaches and lethargy, can be seen, and this is this, this incidence is very, very low. It is seen altogether, it's seen in 15% of the patients. There are all of these at grade one or two, that means these are low grade, and grade three, uh, grade four happened in one patient with a seizure in the context of a bacterial meningitis. So five patients had a total of nine ICANS events, these are neurotoxic events, and seven events occurred along with the CRS. Again, there were no treatment discontinuations that happened 
because of the neurotoxicity or the cytokine release syndrome. So teclistumab offered a good benefit, a deep and durable response in patients with highly refractory multiple myeloma. The response rates were high, two and three people will get a response. And if patients get a response, they continue to maintain the duration for a much, much longer time. The median PFS, what is the benefit that I can expect from this drug? Altogether, taken across all patients, it's close to a year or so. There are toxicities that are real, the CRS, the low counts, the low white counts, low red cells, low platelets, those are real. And these could be addressed with supportive measures. The neurotoxicity is, is real as well, but the, but the incidence is low, not harmful. So all of these data suggest that the clistomab is a good agent that, if approved, will help as a off-the-shelf agent to be available to a patient that is in need uh, for this bispecific antibody. There are several other, uh, several other clinical trials that are underway trying to see the utility or the benefit of this drug as way early lines of therapy. Thank you.